Welcome to the AWA Networks Mail Filter Tutorial. This is to allow you to be able to fully utilize the full features of our new webmail filtering system as well as to familiarize yourself with the layout and how things work. So let's go ahead and begin by logging in with our email address. Any valid AWA Networks or Skyview Mail webmail or email address will work. So just go ahead and type in your email address and if you do not have a filtering account it will be created on your first login. Go ahead and hit enter or click on the login button to get in and you'll be greeted with the home page here. Quick rundown, you'll see up here at the top left the different tabs that take you to your different areas. The delivered, which is a delivered section. We'll go ahead and go over that now. Any email that has been delivered to your inbox will show up in here for seven days. This allows you to go in and if a message gets to your inbox that is spam, it allows you to educate your spam filter so it knows that that message is a bad email. Uh, also, it allows you to go in here and see what you've received over the last few days, so if you by chance happen to accidentally erase an email that you wanted to keep, as long as it's within seven days of receiving that email in the first place, it will appear in this and you can have that re-delivered. Up here at the top you'll see several buttons. Confirm non-spam is something you can utilize to also further educate your filter to know what messages are legitimate. So we've received a welcome message from Aiken at SkyviewTech.com. I know that's a legitimate email. I'm going to go ahead and toggle that and click Confirm Non-Spam so I know that that is a non-spam message and I want to receive email from them at all times. A uh, side effect from this is also any message you confirm is non-spam that sender will always be automatically tagged into your white blacklist. We'll cover that here in a second. Now, also, if a message happens to get in that is spam, but it's delivered to your inbox, you can select that message and click on the Report Spam button. That will train your filter to know that that sender is always spam and also make your filter more efficient. If you simply want to clear out this queue, you can click on the Delete button. And if you want to resend a message to you, if you happen to have deleted it, simply toggle it and click on the Redeliver button. That will send that message back into your inbox. The next tab is the white slash blacklist. This is where you can manage your individual white blacklist. Uh, this allows you to always receive an email address from somebody, or an email from somebody, regardless of their address or domain, or always block messages coming from that domain or that individual address. As you see down here, we've already got an email whitelisted or green from Bill Gates at Microsoft.com and I decided I don't want to hear from him anymore. I can either click on block address and turn him to the block list so he will no longer be allowed through my filter, uh, filter or if I change my mind and allow him he once again becomes back on the whitelist. You can remove the rule over here if you happen to have uh, somebody that was added by mistake or you want to allow them through or stop blocking their email, you can simply click on remove rule and that will take them off of your blacklist or your whitelist depending upon what they're already on. In order to add a message all you, or add an address or domain to that, all you have to do is type in the domain up here. For example, you have somebody at msn.com or just msn.com. So let's assume I want to block everybody from the domain msn.com. All I do is type in msn.com and anybody with an email address at msn.com will no longer be allowed into my inbox. Or rather, I clicked allow so they will be allowed into my inbox. If I wanted to block them, I would have clicked block or I can simply block the address here. And I don't want that rule. I like email from msn.com. i got several friends on that server, so I'm going to remove that rule so they can go in here. Now the whitelist and blacklist will always bypass any of the filters. So if you receive an email from Bill Gates at Microsoft.com that contains a virus or is a spam, it will be delivered to your inbox regardless of what the contents of the message are because this allows the filters to be by bypassed entirely. So be fairly cautious when adding to your whitelist and blacklist. Make sure you always want to receive emails from them or never receive emails from them because that's what will happen. The next tab you'll see is the junk tab. This is your general spam filter. This is where you will see messages that have been tagged as spam. Over here on the left you will see a risk category. Now that indicates just how likely that message is to be spam. And they will always be sorted in a descending order. Messages at the top of this list, if you have more than one, they will be the least likely to be spam. So it's possible you may have an email that got in here that got tagged as spam that it is not. 
those will usually be at the very top of the list, so they should be fairly easy to obtain and get to. And if you decide that that message is not spam, all you have to do is click on the toggle button here and then click on the rescue message button, and that will move that from the spam filter and deliver it to your inbox. That will also educate the spam filter to know that that message is not spam and will make it more accurate in the future. Also, conversely, if you have a message in here that is spam and you want to help educate your filter to make it more accurate, simply toggle the messages that you know are spam and click on the Confirm Spam button. That will tell the filter that those email addresses are invalid or <clears throat> potential spammers as well as the subject line and all the data within the email confirms it as a message that is spam. Or if you simply want to clear this queue out, select the message that you wish to delete, and click on the delete button and the redeliver button also will do the same as the redeliver on the delivered it will send the message to your inbox again now the more attention you pay to this field here the more likely you will to have accurate spam filtering you can ignore it we have very effective rules however this allows you to tailor the system to your own individual uses and needs if you want to look at a message and you're not sure if it's spam but you want to see what's in it safely you can click on the subject line that will bring up the spam scanning preview pane which will allow you to see exactly why the spam was blocked in the first place what tagged it as uh, spam where it was from as well as the email in a text only uh, setting you will only see these individual uh, text you won't see pictures you won't see links um, all of those are scrubbed clean so you can safely access the email without fear of infection or potentially uh, inappropriate materials so you can either close that by clicking close or the escape key. You'll see up here also all these options that appeared previously. Uh, you can simply choose one of these options to either confirm the spam, rescue the message if it's not spam, delete it, or redeliver it to your inbox. The next tab you'll see is the viruses tab. These are messages that have been sent to you that contain a virus or other infected software. These uh, are generally accurate, however, if you receive one of these and it's from somebody that you trust implicitly, uh, go ahead and rescue the message by clicking on that and click on Rescue Message. However, if it is spam and you want to confirm that and test your or te uh, teach your browser, click on the Report button and that will mark that and confirm that as a bad email. Again, if you want to clear your list, click on Delete or Redeliver. Now, if you have more than one message that you wish to confirm as one thing, you have these toggles up here that allow you to toggle all of them, or toggle none of them, or invert your toggles if you haven't, if you've toggled a few of them but want to toggle the rest instead of the few that you toggled. Uh, play with those and see how they uh, function if you have any questions on that. I recommend simply individually clicking on the messages you wish to check, however. It is better to be accurate than use a all mark, because if you begin to train your filter that messages that are not spam are spam, it will begin to treat them as such and you'll start confusing your filter. So be cautious with how you use the toggle all and the rescue and confirm spam buttons. The last tab you'll see is the blocked attachments. These are for attachments that are potentially dangerous to your computer. They may not necessarily be dangerous, but they're attachments that we block because they tend to be malicious files. Uh, you'll find here that I've already received multiple files that have been banned. Uh, up here I have minecraft.exe and I know that person that's coming from. I know Minecraft.exe is a safe file attachment. I play Minecraft. However, I don't know if it's attached with a virus or not. That's why it's in the blocked attachment. If I really trust this person and I really want to receive that, I can rescue the message. Or if I know it's a spam message, I can click on the report spam. If I do not want to keep that at all, I can click delete or I can have it redelivered to myself. Now, up here in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see some basic information. You're welcome for your email address, though, so you know who you're logged in as. Your current protection level, we have multiple protection levels. We'll go over those in here in a few moments. Down here, you'll see the settings, help, and log out button. Log out will end your session and take you back to the login page. Help will take you to our help page, where you can read up uh, more information on what I'm going over here, a little bit more detailed, as well as possibly clarifying something I might have been a little fuzzy on. And the settings will take you to the settings for the email filtering, so you can make changes. The first tab for the settings is the filtering tab. If you drop down the box here, you'll see that we have multiple filtering options. No filtering turns all spam filtering off, which means everything will be delivered to your inbox regardless of its content. 
Virus scanning will scan only for viruses uh, and blocked attachments. If you want that, spam may end up in your inbox, but you're less likely to receive a virus through your system or through your email system. Virus scanning and junk mail tagging scans the messages for viruses and quarantines those. However, if a message is spam, instead of quarantining it in this system, it will deliver it to your inbox, but tag that email with junk. So that way you can see that it is junk, and that can give you an idea as to how accurate the spam filter is. Uh, we recommend utilizing the medium setting down here. However, you can use those at your own discretion. Low is a setting for people that are a little bit cautious about what messages are coming through. They don't want to worry about missing a message that may potentially be tagged to spam and don't want to have to sit and monitor this quarantine system. However, uh, keep in mind, if you set it to low, you may see more spam inside your inbox. You can make that more effective by going into your spam filtering system periodically and clearing out your junk, tagging messages that are spam, and marking messages in your delivered queue that have been received that are spam as spam, so it knows to prevent those from reaching your system in the future. Medium is a more aggressive setup uh, where you are less likely to see spam get caught in your system is also less likely to have messages being caught. High is our highest and most aggressive spam filtering. That will block the majority of spam from ever getting into your inbox, however it may also result in more messages that are not spam being caught by the spam filter. So we recommend leaving this at medium, however select that at your own individual needs and you can adjust it at any time if you feel it's too aggressive or not aggressive enough. Once you've made your selection just click change filtering and that will update that. The next tab you'll see is addresses. This just shows you the addresses that are associated with your account. We only have one here so you will only see one in this list. The MISC tab is for miscellaneous settings. The quarantine reminder email is off by default. You can turn that on. What that will do is that will send you an email anytime you have messages in your junk or quarantine folders that needs to be inspected. If you do make that set to yes, you need to select how many hours you want to receive that. For example, if you set that to 24, every 24 hours you will receive an email telling you you have spam in your inbox or your quarantines that needs to be taken care of. So depending upon how often you want to be notified of that, you will select that number in hours. You can set that to any number you would like. We're going to go ahead and leave that off. The next one, add senders of your rescued mail to your whitelist. That is on by default. Uh, that just will add people that you have marked as delivered or rather, sorry, uh, in the junk folder, if you have a message that is caught in the spam folder, not the delivered, but the spam folders, these three up here, junk viruses and blocked attachment, if you rescue a message from that, it will move them automatically to your whitelist. So you don't have to worry about them being caught by the spam filter again. The next message is how many messages to be displayed on each page. We have that set to 50 as most of our users have broadband connections. You may decrease that or increase that based upon your own individual personal settings. Uh, that just shows how many individual messages are displayed on each page before showing a page break at the bottom of the page. Trim email lines to characters. That just trims uh, the non-email lines in the individual message. Uh, these we recommend leaving the default setting, however you can increase that if you want to see more characters or decrease that if you want to see fewer. However 20 is a general uh, accepted line on that. We recommend leaving that for to make your visual appearance the best. And the bottom should non-spam items be cached. We recommend leaving that as yes. What that does is that gives you the delivered quarantine which allows you to go back and check on messages. If you deselect that, messages will only go to your inbox and will not be caught in the delivered category here. Once you've made any changes, go ahead and click on the update miscellaneous settings button or click the reset if you've made changes but don't want to keep them. One last thing about these individual quarantines, uh, you will find that these individual quarantines, the junk, viruses, and block detachments stick around for 30 days. Every 30 days they will be automatically trimmed. So a message that is 30 days or older will be removed from these automatically. So you do not need to come in and monitor that if you do not wish. Delivered, however, only has a lifespan of 7 days. Messages will only remain in the delivered queue for 7 days. After that they will be automatically purged. And that concludes our basic setup or explanation of our webmail client for our mail filtering. If you have any questions, please contact our support line at area code 435-674-0320, extension number 2. Thank you for watching.